Hello, hello, and welcome to the Waffle Free Storytelling Podcast. It's Tina Constant here, and we've had another weird, odd, crazy, unexpected week on planet Earth. So you know where to go and get the waffle. It's in the show notes or www.tinaconstant.com. In the meantime, here's a story about the value of things. There was, not too long ago, and not so far away, a couple who lived in a house at the edge of a wood at the edge of a town. They lived on their own, and as far as possible, they chose not to interact with anyone in the world. People can't be trusted, they'd say to each other. They don't know the value of things. So it was that they lived in their house, surrounded by sheds and storerooms, boxes and trunks, filled with the things that they loved most. One box was full of bottles, another was stashed with nails and hammers, tools and wire, another was stuffed full of papers, boxes and envelopes that had come in the mail, one more was full of books that had been left in the box for so long that the pages had moulded together. Their collection had grown over the years and years as they gathered whatever they touched. It was as if touching it was the thing that gave it value. Now the couple were so engrossed with their collection that anyone who came to the house was immediately turned away. So as time passed, people stopped coming by. And soon, it was just the old couple. And as you can imagine, their collection soon became their only reason for being. But there was one child who wouldn't stay away. Every day, he would come to the couple's house and open sheds, boxes, cupboards, cabinets and rooms and ask, What does this do? What does this do? And what do you do with this? No matter what the old couple did, they couldn't get rid of the child. So they built a new room. And they started a new collection. It didn't take long, of course, for the boy's friends to come looking for him. And so the old couple's collection grew. One by one, the room filled and the old couple were happy. This new collection was lively. But as with all things they collected, the old couple closed the door when the room was filled and moved on to something else. And there the boys stayed. No matter what they did or how loud they shouted, no one heard them and no one found them. And when they finally fell silent, the old couple were relieved and happily forgot that they were there at all. Until, that is, the fire. The fire changed everything. Everyone said it was an accident. The fire department said it was an accident. There was nothing to say it wasn't an accident. But the old couple, they were not so sure. Surrounded by what was left of their collection, the old couple started by picking out the bottles from the mess and filling them with ashes until every bottle and every flake of ash was collected and in rows. They found burned papers, melted metal, incinerated fibers, but no bones, not one. The boys, they said to each other, where are the boys? The only thing they could imagine was that somehow they'd got free and they had started the fire. The couple cursed the brats. And as the sun set on the first night after the fire, the pair sat huddled next to each other and waited. They were sure the boys would be back. But they were exhausted 
and it didn't take long for them to fall asleep. When they woke the next morning, all the bottles were empty. The ash was spread around the old couple in a circle, and there were small bare footprints inside it. The second night, the old couple did everything they could to stay awake, but again they fell asleep, and again the ashes were scattered around them and filled with small bare footprints. On the third night, the old couple were determined to stay awake. They jumped up and down, they sang, they danced, and they talked. They talked about their collections, they talked about their things. But although they could remember every single thing they had, how it was stored and where it was stored, they could not remember how they had got it or where they had got it. But they didn't care. They didn't need those memories. They had all the stuff they needed and they knew how to get more. The fire didn't matter. They would create new collections. They got so excited about their stuff that they danced themselves into a delirium that was so high and wild they didn't find it unusual when they were joined by fifth. Dean boys. We've come to give you a choice, the boys said. Let go of your stuff and you get to live today. Choose to keep it and you live forever. The old woman laughed. Are you mad? She ran her hands through the ashes. I choose to keep our glorious stuff and live forever. The old man was just about to agree, but then he paused. There was a glint in the boy's eyes that he didn't trust. I will let it go, he said, and live today. The boy stamped on the ash, setting fire to it again. Bright, hot, white, yellow, and blue flames erupted around the woman. The effect was instant. And when the flames died, the old woman was gone. Just ashes remained. The man stared at the footprints as they faded, one by one. Live today, the last boy whispered before he too disappeared. As dawn came on that day, the man stared at the ash around him. Then he got a shovel and he started to dig. He dug and mixed, shoveled and worked until all the ash was mixed in with the soil. Then he took cuttings from the forest and he planted them. He took wood left from the house and he rebuilt. People from the town stopped by and watched, but the old man ignored them. He only had today to live. He had no time to talk. By the end of the day, he had built a garden. He named the garden after his wife. Under her name, he engraved the following words. In eternal memory of my wife. Then the old man sat and he waited for death. By morning, however, he was still very much alive. He looked around the new garden and he noticed new sprouts, so he tended them all. This time, when people walked by to see what he was doing, he stopped and looked up. The people smiled. The old man almost smiled back. By the end of the day, he sat again and he waited for death. But again the next morning, he was very much alive. So once more he tended the garden. Then this time when people dropped by, he stopped his work and he invited them in. The people looked around the garden and enjoyed it. Some people bought new plants and the old man placed them in the rich, rich soil. Night after night, the old man waited for death. Day after day, he took care of the garden and grew it until it spread far and wide. 
The garden fed every person who lived in the town and provided a peaceful, beautiful, soulful place for anyone who wanted to stop and breathe and listen and live for the day. Finally, after many years, the old man did die. And when his ashes were spread around the garden, people said this of him. He had everything, but he owned nothing. He lived every day. And that's it from the Waffle Free Storytelling Podcast this week. If you want the waffle, then just look down into the show notes or drop along to www.tinaconstant.com and come by, find the other stories and say hello. So have a splendid week. Go and do something spectacular and beautiful and surprising for someone you love. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.